In this chapter, we study the different types of distribution systems and networks. We will first review the typical electrical symbols used in the schematic diagrams of power distribution systems. Then, we will study the main types of distribution systems. Note that, we cannot cover all types, because they are quite large in number, but we will mainly concentrate on the main and commonly used ones. Let's start with the electrical symbols, which are defined by the International Electrotechnical Commission, IEC. The standard is, IEC 60617, which is about the graphical symbols for distribution systems diagrams. The transformer symbol in the first row, represents a variety of transformers from liquid filled to dry types. Additional information is normally printed next to symbol, indicating winding connections, primary and secondary voltages and KVA or MVA ratings. The next symbol, normally represents a medium voltage drawout circuit breaker, with a rated voltage of 5 kV and above. Drawout circuit breaker is a circuit breaker and a supporting structure designed so, the assembly can be moved to, either the main circuit connected or disconnected position, without removing connections or mounting supports. The next symbol, represents a structure that is equipped to accept, a circuit breaker, in the future, commonly known as provisions. The next symbol, represents a fixed mounted low voltage circuit breaker, which is a non-drawout or non-removable type. The last symbol represents, a removable or drawout low voltage circuit breaker. The first symbol represents, a switch in low or medium or high voltage applications. Note that a switch in open position, is shown here. The next symbol represents, low voltage and power fuses. The next symbol represents, a low and medium or high voltage bus duct. A bus duct, also called busway, is a sheet metal duct containing either, copper or aluminium bus bars, for the purpose of conducting a substantial current of electricity. It is an alternative means of conducting electricity to power cables or cable bus. The next symbol represents, current transformers mounted in assembled equipment. A ratio of 4000 amperes, to 5 amperes, is shown here. The next symbol, represents potential transformers usually mounted, in assembled equipment. A ratio of 480 volts to 120 volts, is shown here. The next symbol represents, a grounding or earthing point. And the last symbol represents, a battery in an equipment package. Here, the first symbol represents, a motor, and is also shown sometimes with a letter M inside the circle. Additional motor information is commonly printed next to the symbol, such as horsepower, speed in RPM, and voltage. The next symbol represents, a single contact, or a single pole switch, which is in this case in the open position, and which is used for motor control. The next symbol represents, a single contact, or single pole switch, which is in this case in the closed position, and which is used for motor control. The next symbol represents a light indicator. The letter inside the circle indicates the color. The red color is indicated here with a letter R. The next symbol represents an overload relay, which protects a motor, should an overload condition develop. The next symbol represents a variety of capacitors. Capacitors are usually used in the distribution system, to compensate for the reactive power, and regulate the voltage. The last symbol represents a meter. A letter is usually shown to designate the meter type. For instance, A is used to designate an ammeter and V is used to designate a voltmeter. 
Here, the first symbol represents a protective relay. The device number designates the relay type, 50 is used for instantaneous overcurrent, 59 is used for overvoltage, 86 is used for lockout, etc. The next symbol represents an emergency generator. The symbol is frequently shown in conjunction with a transfer switch. The next symbol represents a fuse disconnect switch. The symbol is a combination of a fuse and disconnect switch, with the switch in the open position. The next symbol represents a low voltage motor control. The symbol is a combination of a normally open contact or switch, overload relay, motor, and disconnect device. The next symbol represents a medium voltage motor starter. The symbol is a combination of a drawout fuse, a normally open contact or a switch, and a motor. The next symbol represents a meter center. A series of circle symbols, representing meters, which are usually mounted in a common enclosure. The next symbol represents a load center or panel board. One circuit breaker representing a main device, and other circuit breakers, representing feeder circuits, which are usually put together in a common enclosure. The first symbol represents a transfer switch, which could be a circuit breaker type transfer switch, or non-circuit breaker type transfer switch. The next symbol represents a current transformer, with connected ammeter. The instrument connected, could be a different instrument, or several different instruments, identified by their corresponding letter. The last symbol represents protective relays, connected to a current transformer. Device numbers indicate types of connected relays, such as, 67 for directional overcurrent relay, and 51 for time overcurrent relay. For a more comprehensive list of symbols, you can refer to the textbook Appendix B, which is about graphic symbols used in distribution system design. The textbook used here is, Electric Power Distribution Engineering, by Tura and Conan, 3rd edition, CRC Press 2014, published by, Taylor and Francis Group LLC. Now, let's move to the definition and description of the main types of distribution systems, which is the main subject of this chapter. This figure, illustrates a typical schematic diagram, of an electric power distribution system. Usually, from upstream to downstream, the starting point is the distribution main substation. Then, we have a primary feeder, which is protected with a main circuit breaker. Several laterals are connected to the main feeder. Several sublaterals can also be connect to laterals. The transformers connected to the sublateral are represented by their primary circuit only if, their secondary circuit is not represented in the schematic diagram. This orange colored part of the circuit, is called the primary distribution system. Now when the secondary circuits of the transformers are represented, we call it secondary distribution system, which is shown in green color here. In the secondary distribution system, we can have secondary feeders connected to the transformer secondary circuit. We can also have removable or draw out circuit breaker for each feeder connected to the main bus bar. We can have also a panel board and the bus duct. This schematic diagram shows, a simple radial type system. The system has the lowest investment, and can be deployed and expanded easily. This system is commonly used, because it offers high reliability, and is safe, flexible, stable, and easy to operate and to maintain. However, the disadvantage of this system is that, the loss of cable, primary supply, or transformer, will cut off the service to all customers. In addition, equipment must shut down, to perform routine maintenance and service.
an improved configuration of the radial type distribution system is, the expanded radial system, which is illustrated in this schematic diagram. This system can be applied to large loads, by means of a radial primary distribution system, to supply a number of unit substations, which are located near the center of the loads, and supplying the loads through a radial secondary system. The advantage is that, a fault in one feeder, results in loss of the load connected to that feeder only. While the disadvantages of the system are, the lack of continuity of service, and low flexibility. This animation, illustrates the normal and faulty cases of operation of the expanded radial system. Notice that, when a fault occurs on one of the feeders, that specific feeder will be disconnected from the buzz bar, but the other two feeders will remain energized. A better configuration or type of the radial system, is the primary selective system, that is shown in this figure. In this system, each unit substation is connected to two separate primary feeders, through switching equipment, to provide a normal and alternate sources. As shown in this figure, Upon failure of the normal source, the distribution transformer can be switched to the alternate source. Switching can be either manual or automatic, but there will be an interruption, until the load is transferred to the alternate source. Another type of distribution system, is the primary loop system, that is illustrated with the example in this figure. It is called primary selective, because the selection switches are placed on the primary sides of the transformers. This system offers the same advantages and disadvantages as the primary selective system. The failure of normal source, of a primary cable fault, can be isolated, and service can be restored by proper sectionalizing the system network. However, finding a cable fault in the loop, may be difficult. The quickest way to find a fault, is to sectionalize the loop and reclose, and may involve several reclosings on the fault. However, the system may be potentially dangerous, because the section may be energized from both ends. Therefore, Special precaution must be considered, for safe operation and maintenance, of such a loop system. Another type of loop system is the secondary selective system, that is illustrated by the example in this figure. In this system, pairs of unit substations are connected through a normally open secondary tie circuit breaker, shown in red color, the result is thus, a secondary selective system. Indeed, when a fault occurs on one of the main feeders or transformers, the secondary buzz bars are connected with the secondary tie circuit breaker. We can illustrate the system operation through this animation. If the primary feeder or transformer fails, the main secondary circuit breaker on the affected transformer is opened, and the tie circuit breaker is closed, and one transformer supplies the total load.
However, we should ensure that, both transformers can carry the total loads when fault occurs. Otherwise, load must be reduced. As mentioned earlier, these are just few examples of typical distribution system configurations and types. The selection of the type of system depends on the complexity, flexibility, cost, reliability, and availability constraints. This is the end of this lecture and this chapter. I hope that it was clear and informative. Thank you for watching.